What's going on, guys? This is Real Deal Fantasy HQ with your boy LQ back in for another great episode. And today's episode is about predictions of the possible landing spot for Deshaun Watson. Yes, my Christmas tree is still up. This is the first episode for 2021. And it's still January. We're still celebrating Christmas, or I'm just too lazy. And I think it's that. I'm just too lazy to take it down. I could take it down now, but it looks nice. I'm not going to do that. But again, you're here. You saw the thumbnail. You know what it is. You are here for possible landing spots for Deshaun Watson. This is part one because a little too early for the offseason talk for free agency. But we just we're just getting all this news. We're getting all these things happening right now. So they have to be talked about. They have to be explained a possible landing spots that actually fit for Deshaun Watson if he's going to be on the move. So. I don't want to waste any more time, so let's get right into the episode. So, we are here for the possible landing spots for Deshaun Watson. This is crazy, and it's not really left field, actually, to actually think that Deshaun Watson wants out of Houston. I've said it before. He even signed that $56 million contract. Deshaun should get out as soon as possible before it is too late. But he did sign that big contract, the no trades clause, $156 million. Takes a big cap hit in 2022 of $40 million. So it makes it harder to believe that he can actually be traded and the team takes on that big cap hit in 2022. And fifth, he only takes a cap hit this year, 2021 of 15 million so it's not too crazy but there are teams who could take that on and it actually makes sense for some of these landing spots so the latest news the biggest news that we saw today this morning was Tua for Watson and I'm like where did this come from and it, it, it sounds good you know what I mean but can it happen like I don't think Miami wants to give up on Tua this this soon you know what I mean they have 25 million dollars in cap so they could get Watson. They could take that $15 million cap. And I don't know. I just don't think that uh, I take too much consideration to believe this just yet. I need more information. It's still too early. But seeing that this will even pop out from the big guys, the bleach reports and et cetera, and, you know, ESPN and NFL Network, all the big league guys are talking about it. And I guess this is from a credible source that this actually might be a thing. So if we actually lay everything out and think about it, Tua for Watson, what exactly would Houston want back, you know, in return for giving up Watson? And I definitely think, you know, it would have to be first round picks, obviously, even with them getting Tua, the compensation has to be great. I mean, they could end up getting that third pick in the first round back, even though they gave it to him. You know, they could be like, hey, give her back or whatever the case may be. And they also have an 18th pick as of right now that Miami has. They also probably will want that as well. But that's a lot for Miami to give up for Watson. And also to put in consideration, Ryan Fitzpatrick is a free agent as well. So this could be, you know, reason not to sign Fitzpatrick back, you know, to groom Tua or to move Tua or whatever, et cetera, to move him forward in his career. But Getting Watson means you lose to it and you lose Fitz. I don't see them signing Fitzpatrick to play behind Watson. You know what I mean? I don't know if he needs it, but again, he could end up getting signed as an emergency quarterback just in case Watson, you know, takes a shit or he ends up getting hurt, you know, God forbid. But this just sounds crazy to me to talk about in January, Watson for Tua. You know, Tua didn't have too much of a bad year, but in fantasy, I wasn't expecting. I wasn't really impressed. You know, in real life, it's good that they won games with him, and I definitely like how he plays. He's explosive. He can make plays. He's also a left-handed quarterback. I don't know. It's just I don't feel like I'm too wild about Tua, and I definitely think that, you know, him in Houston, is it could be okay. You know what I mean? It could be all right. But Watson is just unhappy about the process of hiring of the GM, the new GM, Nick Serrano, or whatever the hell his name is, this guy here. But, um... Yeah, he looks crazy as hell, but he was just not happy about the process of how they were doing things of the hiring process for the general manager. Not saying he's entitled to that, but he is supposed to be your leader, your quarterback, you know, the face of the team. And you're not including him or not listening to his suggestions. And now he's ghosting the entire organization, which isn't a good sign. We usually see this happen when guys are holding out. We usually see this when it's big contract, you know, conversations going down, not communicating with the team, not showing up to OTAs, workouts, et cetera, practice. And right now, Watson does have a reason to be, you know, unhappy with Houston. The 
the turmoil that's going there, the toxicness, it seems like it's how it was in Jacksonville. There's a lot of a lot of things going on. You know, they started the season off on five. He didn't really have the best coach in Bill, Bill O'Brien. And then they trade D hop. And it's just like a lot of bullshit's been going on there. So like I said, before he signed that big contract, I kind of wanted Watson to get out of there before it's too late, but he's 25 right now. So he has time. He's still young, but um, the problem is, is that that contract hit in 2022 where it's $40 million. And I definitely think a team who has the cap space can deal with that. They can, you know, say whatever with that, but they might move it around kind of like how the Rams did, you know, give, you know, most of the money on the signing bonus or whatever the case may be. I don't know how any of that works. It's just crazy how the Rams pulled it off, you know, having Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey and Gurley and all these people signed. And it's just like, how we have no money, but here we are. So I think him in Miami, it definitely helps Devontae Parker. His stock rises, even Preston Williams, that entire offense, Mike Kosecki as well. That entire offense gets a major upgrade, but it's a matter of what Miami loses to get Watson. And I don't think they're trying to lose the two first round picks that they have. I kind of would just, if I was Miami, I would roll with Tua, re-sign Ryan Fitzpatrick, you know, hit free agency with, you know, the $25 million you got. Because most of the cap money is on the defense right now. The top three players for the most expensive players they got hitting their cap are two corners and an outside linebacker. So I definitely think they can invest in something on that offense. They could bring in, you know, guys to come help out too. They can bring in more weapons. They definitely need a run back as well. You know what I mean? I'm not saying, you know, their running backs are terrible, but you can bring in a big star, <laughs> Aaron Jones. <laughs> but anyway, here's that. So two of for Watson sounds good. It sounds pretty, but again, it's January. We're a little too early right now to actually get into that because we don't know how concrete this is. We don't know how true it is, but again, nothing could be moved right now anyway. So another fit that I think Watson should take in consider is moving to San Fran. Kyle Shanahan is desperate for a quarterback. They are literally a quarterback away from taking that division. And as a Rams fan, I can admit that the weapons on their offense, their defense is stud. I definitely think, you know, Watson to San Fran with Kittle, Brandon Aboye, uh, Ayuk, I mean, and uh, D, uh, Debo Samuel. I definitely think that is something he should consider because they are definitely a quarterback away from going back to the big dance. So I definitely think it makes sense. Them giving up Jimmy, Jimmy G in that trade process. They have the 12th pick in the first round right now. They have some of the cash space they can take on Deshaun Watson's uh, contract. And they definitely can, like I said, figure it out when he takes that $40 million cap hit to any team he's on in 2022. So I definitely think, you know, Jimmy G, Jimmy G in that trade with the 12th pick in the first round is definitely something Houston should consider, even though their new GM actually drafted Jimmy G when he was with the Patriots. So that's something also to consider as well. That is something to take, you know, take into where the relationship is there. Jimmy G right now trading them would save San Fran over 20 million, you know, in cash space. And he's only taken one to $2 million in dead money. So that is nothing here or there. So that's definitely something they should get on the ball now to move in Jimmy G while that cash space is at one to $2 million. That is something beautiful. If they cut him, you know, it'd just be a waste. They should try to put him in the trade package says, here's my scenario. Houston takes that 12th pick in the first round from San Fran. They draft the top prospect quarterback. They get Jimmy G to groom him. They get him to, you know, get him ready to be the starter kind of, you know what I mean? Jimmy G already accepting that this isn't his franchise. He's not going to take over and et cetera, et cetera. Just get the next guy ready for the future, kind of playing the Fitzpatrick role. So I think Jimmy G ends up, you know, starting out, you know, week one, week two, et cetera. He beats him in camp, but then the kid gets in. He's very explosive. They have the weapons. I still like Brandon Cooks. I still like the possibility of signing Will Fuller. And I definitely like David Johnson there as well. So even if it was two or Jimmy G or whoever goes over to Houston and plays on a Watson, they have weapons still. Where the money needs to go, the money that they don't have, is on that defense to be able to stop the run. They were one of the worst teams stopping the run. People were running all over them. That defense was just overall bad. So that's where the focus in the draft should be. So, again, I definitely think, you know, the San Fran Moon move would definitely help San Fran. And I definitely think that they're one quarterback, they're one piece away from that Super Bowl. So it only makes sense, people. But we have to play devil's advocate. What if – you know, Deshaun Watson doesn't go anywhere. He stays in Houston. 
what does this mean? They have no first round pick. They have no money. They're taking cap hits. He's unhappy, clearly, publicly showing he's unhappy. And what is this result to? Nothing. It results to another lost season. It's just going to be what it was this past season, even though, you know, they fired their head coach, they hired a new GM. Maybe there's a new attitude in the building and the faculty, a new culture. Who knows? That defense is still bad. Deshaun Watson's still unhappy. And what I took from that video of J.J. Watt apologizing, saying, I'm sorry, man, we wasted your season. You should have 12 wins, et cetera, et cetera. And the body language and the feeling that I got from Deshaun Watson was like, you know what, bro? I don't even care. I don't want to hear it. I'm not happy here. I'm looking to leave. I want to go. You know, it is what it is. It's the same old story over and over. Like Deshaun Watson's been in the league for four years now, and I definitely think he's deserving of a better organization. It's not even a better team, just a better faculty of how they treat their players. And I definitely think it's something going on behind the scenes that we're not really seeing. We got a taste of it with Bill, Bill O'Brien, with JJ Watt going after him, you know, watching not exactly defending him in press conferences. It's just, there's something going on behind the scenes. And I definitely think Watson needs out ASAP. So that's basically the two teams, three teams. If he, you know, does make the move, he does not. So it's either Miami, it's either San Fran or he stays in Houston, which is the unfortunate, you know, scenario there if he ends up staying in Houston, because I really don't want him to. I want him to move on, get the money. Well, he has the money, but get the chance at the Super Bowl that you deserve. Get a chance of being a contender, not being a laughing stock of, you know, the league. But, hey, when you trade D-Hop for a bag of chips, not saying, you know, David Johnson sucks, but I would have never did that. I wouldn't even did that in Madden. I wouldn't even did that if I was tanking. In one of my fantasy leagues so it is what it is man but uh that's all i got for you guys right now this is part one it's january right now it's very early of these predictions we're getting this news as we go as the days goes as the minutes the hours the days go the weeks the months whatever the case may be it's 2021 sean watson is looking to be on the move he's publicly unhappy so where could he possibly go where do you guys think he'll go i think san fran i, I like that move i feel like that's the best fit for him and it gives my Rams hell, gives the Seahawks hell, gives the Cardinals hell. I mean, that division is already hard right now. It's already just just annoying to deal with, you know, twice a year, every year. So I definitely think Watson going to that division will definitely get them to the big dance. So that's all I got for you. This is the first video for 2021. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Leave a comment below what you guys think of the episode. Where do you think Watson is going? Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys next week for another great episode of Real Deal Fantasy HQ. 